This video is on balancing chemical equations. We'll be using just formulas in doing this. You uh, should take good notes and make sure you have your periodic table out. It might be helpful for some of this. Um, also, you might remember doing this in ninth grade. So some of this might be a little reviewer. It might come back to you as we do it. If not, it's okay. We're going to go through it as if you have not seen it before. So balancing chemical equations, what we're doing is we're looking at um, an equation, a reaction. So if you remember from previously at the beginning of the year, we learned about the evidence of a chemical change. That is a reaction. So there are four signs. So usually we see more than one of these. So the four signs are a color change, formation of a gas, an energy change, and a formation of a precipitate. And if you remember a precipitate, that's a solid that can form. So lots of times if you had a reaction maybe in a test tube, that precipitate, that solid, would typically sink to the bottom because it's more dense, so you'll usually see that sitting on the bottom. Or you'll see a cloudy solution because you have those solid particles floating throughout. Um, we have to ban, or sorry, a reaction uh, looks like this. We have reactants on the left side, and there might be more than one, there might be just one. And then you're going to have an arrow, and then you're going to have products listed on the other side. In between different products or different reactants, we use a plus sign, just like you would in math. So you need to kind of understand the parts of an equation. The reactants are on the left side. So anything on the left side of the arrow, so at the beginning, is called a reactant. And you're, I'm going to say that term a lot, or you hear your teachers say that a lot. You need to know what we are talking about. This is always what you start with. These are the things that react. So this term should kind of make sense. On the other side of the arrow are your products. So anything on the right side, so after the arrow, are your products. And these are always what you end with. So when companies talk about their products, it's what they make. This is exactly what happens in a reaction. It's what is made, what is produced. The arrow means yields or gives or makes or forms. So reactants yield products. Reactants make products. You replace with any of those words, okay? And what you'll see on some equations, especially as we get further into this, is you'll start to see the phases. So solid, liquid, gas. And we write these as subscripts. So remember, subscripts are things written down below. And so you use an S in parentheses for solid, an L for liquid, G for gas. And A stands for aqueous. And aqueous means dissolved in water. And we're going to talk more about this once we start writing these. But I want you to be familiar with them and kind of know what they are right now. So... We balance equations because of this law. And remember, laws are things that always happen. Theories explain them. So the law of conservation of matter, conserve means to stay the same. So matter cannot be created or destroyed. You should remember hearing this before, hopefully many, many times. So because it can't be created or destroyed, if you have something as a reactant, it will show up also as a product because it can't just disappear. It, that being said, if you have something as a product, that means you had that in the beginning as a reactant, right? We can't actually do magic. We can't make things disappear or appear out of nowhere. So, balancing, there are kind of some rules, some things to follow. Um, the first is that, is that the identities of the compounds do not change. So your formulas that we've been doing this whole past chapter, they will stay exactly the way they are. For instance, if we're talking about um, sodium chloride, so NaCl, right? There's one sodium and one chlorine. That will never change. So you will never do something like this where you have NaCl2, okay? This doesn't exist. You can't put a 2 there. We figured out last chapter why it's 1 and 1, right? Because it's plus 1 and minus 1, and you can't change that. Um, subscripts, so then it, this relates to the one before it. Subscripts cannot be added or changed. So I can't put a 2 after the CL just to make sure I have two chlorines. Okay? You can never change subscripts or add them or anything or remove them. Um, the way we adjust atoms, the way we have get the same amounts of atoms is we use what are called coefficients. And you've probably talked about coefficients in math. For instance, if you have x squared, right, and there's a 3 in front of it, this 3 is a coefficient, so it's that number in front. So we'll do the same thing. We'll put numbers in front of formulas. So maybe it's going to be like a 3 in front of NaCl like this. That's a coefficient. All right, so some tips to help you. Those are kind of the rules. Tips are, um, one is to do one element at a time. And I will um, show you how to do this in, in our examples. 
So we deal with one at a time to make sure they match up. You have the same amount on either side of your reaction. Another tip is to do those in only one place on either side first. What I mean by that is, let's say you have oxygen in two different compounds, and they're both on the reactant side. Um, don't do that first. Deal with something that maybe there's just one sodium in one compound on one side. Do that first. Um, it might be helpful to think of water as HOH instead of H2O. And we'll talk about when that's appropriate and when not. Um, hydrogen and oxygen are usually in multiple places. So this relates to kind of tip number two up there. So a lot of times it's a good idea to do those two hydrogen and oxygen labs. Um, always, always, always check your answer when you're done. You will know when you finish balancing an equation if you're right or wrong. There should never be a question about it because you can check your work. And polyatomic ions don't separate them. Keep them together. We talk about being them, them being a group of things and we don't change those subscripts. We keep them together even now. So let's do some examples. And if at any time you want to pause the video and try them on your own and then see if you get the answer right, please do so. All right. So starting out, I always tell kids to kind of write everything down and lay it all out on paper and try not to do it in your head. You'll get to the point where you can do it in your head and you can just write the coefficients down. So when we start, we're going to just draw a line down the middle and the middle is that arrow. And then we're going to list our elements. So remember, we're going to do one element at a time. So we're going to do, I'm going to write by elements, I have aluminum, I have bromine, and I have potassium. Now, that's all my reactant side. I have the same elements on the product side, so I'm going to list them again, and I'm going to list them in the same order, and you'll see why in a minute. So, we are in K. So, now I want to write down how many I have of each. So, aluminum, if I look up in my formula for this one, there's only one aluminum. There are three bromines here, and there's one potassium. On the product side, I have one aluminum, one bromine, and one potassium. That's because they don't have any subscripts. So now, the reason I wrote them in the same order is I can look across here and I can see, do they match up? Yeah, those do. My aluminum is balanced. I have one of each. My bromine, however, is not. So, and my potassium is. So bromine is what doesn't work out. So if I have three bromines, on the, on the reactant side, I need to also have the same amount over here. It doesn't necessarily have to be three right now, but they just need to match up. So I cannot, and this is what a lot of kids want to do to start, is they want to just do this. And the reason we can't is because potassium is plus one. Bromine is minus one. Well, that means we had one of each, right? You can't just all of a sudden put a three there because then you'd have negative three for bromine and potassium would not have the same charge. So, we put numbers in front as coefficients. So, numbers are allowed to be placed here, 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 and here. That's it. So, if I want to change BR, I can put a number in front. I can't squish it in the middle. It can only go in front of the whole compound that it's in. So, when I write that number in my reaction, now I'm going to change it down below. That changed this to 3. Okay, but it also changes my K to 3, so I'm going to change that down below. Okay, so now I can see, okay, my aluminum still match, now my bromines match, but now my Ks don't. So let's see if we can get those to match. If I have 3 over here on the product side, let's get 3 on the reactant side. So I look up, K is by itself, so I'm just going to put a 3 in front, and that changes this to 3. So here's where I get to check, am I right? Well, I go through and I say I have one of each aluminum. So aluminums are good. I have bromines. I have three and I have three. So bromines are good. Potassiums. I have three here and three here. So potassiums are good. I am done and I know that I'm correct. So let's try another one. So here, let's split it. Okay, I've got PB. So I've got lead. I've got bromine. I've got H. And I've got CL. So I write the same list on the other side. All right, PB, PR, H, and CL. Okay, so I write out my element or how many I have of each atom. So lead, 
on the product or on the reactant side right here, right, is, is one. Bromine is two, hydrogen is one, chlorine is one. I just look if there isn't a subscript, right? That's like a one. Okay. So over here on the product side, I have one lead, I have one bromine, I have one hydrogen, and I have two chlorines. So what works, what doesn't work? Well, lead is matching, bromine is not, hydrogen is, chlorine isn't. So it doesn't matter where you start. I'm just going to go and order bromines first up here. So if I have two bromines on the reactant side, i got to get two on the product side. So I'm going to put a two right here. It's the only spot I can put it. Right? In front. These are the only ones. Okay? So that changes this to 2. It also affects the other thing in there, the H. So the H changes to 2. Okay? So now my H's and my CL's don't match. So if I look at H's 2 on the product side, i got to get 2 on the reactant side. So I'm going to put a 2 right here. So now I have 2 H's. And I also have 2 CL's. And that's exactly what I wanted. So that works out nicely. And this is how it'll work. It's kind of like a puzzle. Okay. Um, so let's do let's do number four right now as an example. As another example. Okay, so if I scooch down. Alright. So I've got cobalt. Remember the lowercase O is going to make it cobalt, not oxygen with carbon. Okay, I have one of those. Bromine. I have three. Calcium, one. And here's where I see a polyatomic ion, and it helps to recognize them. This is one of the reasons we learn them. You see SO4 on both sides as a group. If you separated it out, you could still do this, but you're doing it in a more difficult way. I'm going to write SO4, and I'm going to think of it as one group. How many groups of SO4 do I have? Well, on this side, I have one, because I don't have a parenthesis and a number. Okay, so let's go on the other side. I've got cobalt. Over here I have two of them, right? Right there. Um, bromine, I have two of them. Let's see, calcium, there's only one. And SO4, so my sulfate, there are three of them. Okay? Now, like I said before, you can start anywhere you want. Only the calcium matches. So I'm just going to start on top with the cobalt here. If I have two on the product side, i got to get two on the reactant side. I can only put coefficients in, so I put a two here. That changes this to two. And now I have to look at my bromines because it also affects that. I had three, but now I have two groups of three. So I have bromine, 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 but now I have another set of those. Okay, so I have six total. So when you have a coefficient and a subscript, you multiply. There we go. Multiply. Okay. So this is six bromines. All right. So now let's fix those. Six bromines on the reactant side to get six on the product side. What am I going to put here times two to get to six? I'm going to put a three. So bromine is now three. Or not three. Sorry. Six. So those two match up. And calcium has changed to three. Okay, so now I go back. Well, I have to make my calcium on the reactant side, right here. I have to make that 3. So I go up to where calcium is. I put a 3 in front. So this is now 3. And then that also means I have 3 of this group. Right? 3 of this. So this changes to 3. And look how it all works out. And they all match up in the end. Um, what I'd like you to do now is the other three on here, the three, yep, the other three on here as examples. I'd like you to try those to be prepared for class tomorrow. So have those done in class tomorrow so that we can go over them and see what your questions are.